Welcome everyone. On View from the Top today, I'm hosting a man who's known to be the mastermind of country's best timed corporate exit, Sunil Godwani, also well known as a brain behind the Singh Brothers exit from Ranbaxy at the best time possible. As Chief Executive and Managing Director of Relegate today, Sunil's a man in a hurry. He's right now blazing ahead to build one of India's most formidable financial services and healthcare businesses. Sunil, welcome on the show. Thank you. Let me start with the, the story that you told us. You said, you know, you were close to the family and you had an account with Relicare. Something made you unhappy and you complained to Malvinder and Malvinder turned around and said, don't complain, just fix it. That was a beginning, wasn't it? Well, in a way, yes. Less emphasis on the word unhappy though. <laughs> there was an issue that uh, the business was uh, growing. It was pretty much dormant after the IT boom and they felt, listen, let's come in together. We have been family friends and let's see what we can do together on the financial services. Mm -hmm. That's how it all started. There were about 18 people that time. We had two officers and today, from there where we were, 90% of the people are still in the company. We have grown to over 1,600 offices. There are close to 14,000 plus people. So that was a humble beginning and we like to rem remember our roots. And how many years has that taken? I joined on 1st August 2001. Mm -hmm. The first year I think practically would write off. It was just understanding, meeting people. I need to appreciate the fact I knew nothing about stock markets. I practically didn't even know what a stock market was, what an equity is, now that I claim to have any better knowledge today. But, you know, I mean that time was pretty raw. and I, but always had the luck and the good fortune having great set of people around me. Mm -hmm. I think it's been a function of teams and systems and the team is still there, very much there performing and they have grown, evolved into larger teams and more people around it. Alright, let's talk about the portfolio of businesses that you have currently. I understand financial services and healthcare. What I don't understand is the focus on let's say aviation, travel, retail, media, through your Vistar fund. Aren't these businesses going through a tough time? Let's, let's just take a step back. You see, every business that we got into are the sunrise businesses. India is a growth story. And all these businesses that you just outlined are growth-oriented businesses. Financial services is held on the Relic Enterprises, which is a holding company, under which we have various subsidiaries that symbolize each business that we run in. However, very clearly, other businesses that we have got into have no cross shareholdings, but they all are targeting businesses with a retail penetration, carrying a huge brand awareness. So if you're looking at, for example, the pathology labs, the super relegate labs business, we touch so many people there on the, on the health side of the business, and that database translates into a huge avenue for data mining for us on the health insurance side, on life insurance side. So there is, a, as you know, it's, it's actually all about touching a client 360 degrees. Mm -hmm. So you're talking to an end user, you are managing the finance, you're managing the diagnostics health, you're even they're touching you when you're going to the shopping into some health pharma stores, you know, and on the wealth management side, on the Macquarie side, they're actually interacting with you using your private jets. So if you actually look at it the flip side, you are touching a client in various facets and all these businesses will evolve into full grown businesses mm -hmm. because they are all businesses which are the growth area. I mean India is a growing economy. Right, when you talk about evolving businesses, let's just shift focus to your financial services portfolio, that's exciting. And uh, broking has been so far one of the largest areas of your business. But going forward, let's say three to five years, which is the growth story that you think will emerge out of your current portfolio? Well, I think there's no debate to the fact we started out as a broking house, but gradually we have tried to move away from the symbolic name that people used to call Relegate as a broking house. I think today there is slight confusion what to call us, but they have they found a name. They say the financial intermediary or an integrated financial services house. Right. So from where we were, an idealistic goal is to be a fully trusted financial services brand, to be a fully integrated financial services house. Is a is a you know it's a long route. I think clearly. With the broking sub businesses today are there and they will continue to grow the investment banking business, the commodity side of the business, the advisory led business in the Macquarie side, the wealth advisement, the life insurance, the health insurance going to kick in. All these other businesses will drive a dominant revenue flow for us. Mm -hmm. And I think in the next few years you will see each business developing as a full fledged standalone business. Right, so you're not going to pinpoint one which one or two which you think. No, you really cannot because you see today why are we in so many businesses? The question that should be addressed is why are we in all the businesses? You know our business is very cyclical. Sometimes the broking will do well, sometimes the, the insurance will do well. Right. So you need to be in a business, in the financial service business where you cover the entire ambit. I'm very clear. Some people say, are you there? Do you have the expertise to handle one vertical? Are you overspreading or are you stretching? I said, we are not. 
we have a vehicle which is a huge horsepower. We got a highway in front of us. I got a team which has a capacity to deliver on anything. We got a bandwidth which can handle anything. So why to limit ourselves? So we are going to cover the entire ambit of financial services. Gradually, all will involve. It's very difficult to pinpoint. Oh, this will do well and this will do better later, because it's a function of markets, a function of time. Right. I think time will tell, but I can let I can assure you everything will evolve to its full capacity. All right, let's uh, let's talk about your acquisitions. Now you have been looking at assets internationally very, you know, aggressively. You have also acquired some assets internationally. Has timing been important? Uh, I could sense some kind of a hurry last year because you know economic uh, scenario was a little slow, and therefore assets could perhaps have come cheaper. Do you think that's reversed now? Timing is now. When you go to acquisitions, I think timing is critical, but that's not the entire thing you look at. You look at the management, you look at the quality of the asset you're you know, looking at. So sometimes even the time may not be right. If an opportunity is there to have an asset, you will go for it. Mm -hmm. You can't really time everything. Yeah, last year I think there was a great opportunity globally with the scenario that was prevailing, the, the valuations were at the rock bottom, that's a perception, may, may go down later again, we don't know. Yeah. But at that point, they were the rock bottom, so there was an opportunity. And we tried to utilize that opportunity to the maximum. I don't think we regret losing it. There will be opportunities at all times. The question is always, we want to acquire an asset that fits into a global blueprint. It has to align with what we want to do. When you talk about global blueprint, uh, is AIG the benchmark? Scale and size, those kind of it's assets? It's benchmark. We set our own benchmarks. I think clearly, you can't really take an institution and say, was that the benchmark? AIG was a story we looked into. It gave us a lot of, uh, I think, global recognition. Mm -hmm. it all of a sudden, realized a player that was relatively unknown in the global scenario appear from nowhere move up up in the hierarchy and be the top bidder for an asset like that it was a you know i think the credibility is of the team i give full credit to the team on that however there are going to be opportunities and i think we gradually we have to send out benchmarks we clearly feel there is an opportunity today to have to be a global financial services player with indian parentage and that's what we are targeting all right. So, what do you make of the global recovery that you see? You know, you're interacting a lot with people abroad. Has there been a visible change in sentiments? Do you really see the sentiments have improved dramatically so much to perhaps justify the rally in the global markets as well as India? I think the rally is liquidity driven. There's been the money was sort of tied up, and all of a sudden the taps opened up, the money flowed in, and the markets went up. I don't know the fundamentals are still into place, honestly. I think that still is a matter of time. We'll come to know the fundamentally the markets are right to be at this level. is a question that nobody can answer, but time will tell. However, it's good to see recoveries are there. It gives a positive sense. There's an optimism in the market, and I think what drives the market is optimism more than reality. What about the India story itself? Everybody we've spoken to has been cautious about the markets running ahead of fundamentals, but they continue to believe that India is a really long, really strong long-term story. We are a consumption-led economy. Look at the demographics in our country. We got a population which is consistently earning and the aging population is at a minimum. The logic is that whatever we do, we will be affected by the global scenario, but we will always be the first ones out of that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what India has done. The, the government with the right measures to a large extent, I think the optimism of the Indian public and basically that whatever we produce, we can consume on a standalone basis has driven this economy. And I personally feel that we are always, we have always been very bullish on India. I've all, I'm a diehard Indian. I just, you know, I just can't put enough word, emphasis on my word that India is going to be the next superpower. There's no debate in our mind on that. All right, and together in India, India and China could perhaps get back I, to 50% of world economy share. Well, we are practically 70% of the world population. Right. So we just need to channelize that into economy, you know. Absolutely. When you talk about the consumption story, of course, there are just too many sectoral plays which are right now depending or going forward with the consumption story. Are there certain sectors that you would bet on from an investment point of view? Let's not talk stocks, but you know, even if someone was to put in money, and this is away from your own businesses like financial services and healthcare. The fact that you're there, obviously uh, you believe in those stories. I think with the government giving indication that divestment is going to happen in certain sectors, I would like to focus on those sectors, let it be metal, let it be commodities. I think the PSU banks are something you should look in. They have a huge reach, a lot of penetration. They have not expanded globally yet and they will expand globally. So there's a huge growth that is there and I think they are changing the mindset how to approach the businesses from the government organizations to our private mindsets. So there are, there are two 
of very good sectors. I think cement sector is very good. With the Indian infrastructure, which is obvious that we need to improve our infrastructure, cement is going to be a raw material everywhere. So along with cement, the infrastructure side, these are all going to be growth sectors. When and how will the when will that happen? It's a matter of time. But I think these are all sectors one should really focus on, keep an eye out for them. All right. Uh, we